Now, uh, how do I put this? Even if you're not a physics nerd, I want to emphasize or point out uh, that this force doesn't get balanced the same way that the gravitational force and the normal force balance that. There is nothing pushing this car forward that way, except for, you know, if it's trying to drive, then it is trying to push itself that way. But uh, by itself, this wheel on its own, like the salt shaker on its own that I was showing you, uh, by itself, there's nothing pushing it forward. Uh, if I wanted to, and it were, you know, a wheel proper and not a salt shaker, I could maybe fix a pivot here. And the effect of that pivot would be, uh, since it's fixed in place, it's got to do the same thing that the floor does. Uh, until it breaks, it'll exert an equal and opposite force to this one. And then you'll see it spin, but it won't translate at all. Uh, the other thing I could do maybe is put another treadmill on there and then by symmetry uh, it can't move either way. Uh, either way works, um, but uh, the point is that it's not being balanced out right now, so it does get accelerated in that direction. Um, I can't speak too much about that without losing several nerds in the process. Uh, or several non-nerds, rather. Losing several non-nerds who are just here. Uh, in fact, I'd imagine they're all fleeing my video right now. Uh, nonetheless, I just want to say that uh, you can confirm by doing impulse or uh, acceleration things that if you're changing the frequency of rotation a certain amount, uh, and doing this by pulling this at a certain... changing the velocity of the ground in a certain way, uh, what you get is that the acceleration of the whole system, the the wheel, the well not just the wheel, but if there's a car attached also the car, uh, so let's say a car, the acceleration of the car is the moment of inertia, and physics nerds will know what that means, divided by the mass of the whole car the moment of inertia of the rotating thing divided by the mass of the whole car uh, times the radius of the wheel squared times the acceleration of the ground. Um, so there is a, there can be a force if this thing is accelerating uh, imparted to the thing that is trying to take off. And uh, the reason why I mention that is uh, well, this is kind of, it's not a great argument, but it's a part of an argument. Uh, the thing is, this idea that the car pushes on the track and the airplane pushes on the air and therefore one goes and the other doesn't, is still, again, completely wrong. Uh, if you start speeding up uh, wheels this way, they will pull back on you. Uh, even if you do try to make an ideal airplane, uh, with like bearings that won't break and an ideal treadmill. Uh, this sort of thing does exert a force on it and if you can get that in the thought experiment, can get the treadmill accelerating fast enough, it will stop a plane just by the fact that it's uh, making the wheels spin faster and faster. Uh, so that's kind of like I said, that's not a great argument, and the reason why it's not a great argument is because of this number. This number, uh, it doesn't have units, It's because this is acceleration and this is acceleration, so this altogether doesn't have units. Um, uh, it depends on the moment of inertia, which tells you how hard it is to spin something, and physics majors, again, can calculate that for you. Uh, if there weren't a car and the wheel was just a solid, you know, mass of one substance, uh, it turns out that this value is one half. You can calculate that the moment of inertia is the mass times the radius of the wheel squared for that case. Um, and, uh, you know, other identities kind of, there are other uh, shapes, rather, that have their own numbers. But, uh, it's important to notice that that's kind of the maximum because uh, you'll have wheels and uh, you'll increase when you uh, do this out with a real plane, right? 
you're going to increase the mass to the weight of a frickin' plane, and it's going to be huge. Whereas the moment of inertia is only going to depend on the wheels, and it's going to be relatively small uh, by comparison. Uh, so that's the general principle of uh, how you would pull a salt shaker, how you could pull an airplane if you did it in a really ideal si in a really ideal situation. Uh, so I'd like to conclude this whole shindig by saying that. Uh, the fact that uh, that Situation 3 can stop an airplane isn't merely a consequence of the fact that it uh, can break the wheels of the airplane, although that's how it would work in any realistic scenario. Uh, if the track starts accelerating fast enough, uh, it can exert a force on the airplane, even if we assume that the airplane's wheels will never break. Uh, it's hard for these things to create large forces because this factor is so small, like I just said. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to conclude with the idea that uh, in situation three, there really is a backwards force on the airplane that can stop it. Uh, okay, so I've run out of things to say, so I should say goodbye now. Uh, farewell, thank you for this little physics diatribe, and... Uh, Enjoy this explaining this problem to your friends. Bye.